Hey everyone, Nick from Income Digs here, and today we're diving into a very common question I get, potentially controversial, how to differentiate real estate projects, real estate properties within QuickBooks Online. Should we be using customers or classes? I'm gonna dive into this controversial issue. I'm gonna show you the pros and cons of each, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do for my business to see if it might apply for yours as well. Let's dive in. So when we think about class or customer, what are we actually talking about? It's the concept that anything within QuickBooks Online, when it comes to real estate investing, you should be able to differentiate which property it is for okay so every single transaction we should understand is it for property a property b property c so that we can do reporting we can understand what we own what we make on all of those if we have to distribute to partners it's very very important of course as a business owner we want to see how we're doing as well we really have two choices class and customer if you know uh, from any of the other videos I have out, I'd like to reserve location for multiple business entity tracking. Check out that video as well. That should absolutely be reserved for that purpose. I'm gonna show you the pros and cons of each. And let's talk about the potential to maybe even do both, all right? So let's get into this within QuickBooks. What I'm gonna do to demonstrate this, let's start talking about customer first, okay? The reason I wanna talk about customer is it's free and it's unlimited, and it is a really good place to start, but as we'll talk about, pros and cons to everything. So I'm gonna go into, just go way back in time to demonstrate this. I'm gonna go into an old net income. I'm gonna pick up a transaction here, and you're gonna see that within this transaction, I'm indicating a customer or project, okay? There's an important reason they're both there. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So I'm indicating that I'm paying property taxes, 4,500 bucks, and boom, right there, that's the property that it's going toward. Now I got class here too, I'm gonna to talk about that in a second. So I'm gonna save and close, get this out of here. So where do we kind of set that up? That would happen within the sales section here, customers, boom, right there, okay? So if I look at my list of customers, this is where we can go to establish one customer per property. Now the terminology is not perfect. I definitely admit that. Calling a customer a property is, is kind of a bummer. I would love, of course, we all would, to have a really specific property label somewhere that we could use, but we don't have that. So here I have my customer, here's my property. I have a few of these here and notice that I have some people below them. And so this comes into play if we are in fact invoicing out of QuickBooks Online. If that's the case, we need to be sending our actual physical customers invoices, people who actually have names and email addresses, right? And so we have the potential to kind of group these customers or in this case tenants within the property that they belong. When, if and when they were to move out, we can then establish that they're inactive and they fall away and this gives us a really nice almost like a property management look of you know what tenants belong to each property that's nice it really looks nice in this hierarchy and works out well as, as well the other thing about customers is that that what we need to use if we're going to be using projects so if you want to use projects at all which is something available in quickbooks online pro and beyond you're going to need customers the reason for that is that every project happens to be a sub customer Okay, it's just the hierarchy that QuickBooks use. So you can see 365 Central Park. I've got this Irene Lee, that's an actual human being, that's a customer, but if I go into this project, you're gonna see that I actually have a project here as well, which is like a flip, and that shows up in this projects portal. So if you wanna use this, you're gonna need customer at some level to have, here's my property, and then here's the project I wanna use. I find that using projects is really a great tool for flippers. Okay, if you're doing flips of any kind, you probably wanna investigate the projects portal, you probably wanna use it for sure, which would mean you are using customers. So customer is amazing. For that reason, it's unlimited. You can do kind of a hierarchy within your tenants and you are gonna need it if you wanna use projects. That being said, there's also classes, something to be aware of. Classes are amazing as well. Let's talk about what classes are. Classes are available on QuickBooks Online Plus and Beyond. So if you have QuickBooks Online Plus and Beyond, you're, you're gonna have access to them. You can turn them on. In the Advanced tab here in my settings, I'm gonna turn classes on. And I'm gonna save that right there. And your list of classes is actually going to be found in this section called All Lists. And within that here, I have my classes. Now you are limited within QuickBooks Online Plus to 40 classes or locations or businesses, okay? So if that is an issue for you, we need to really think about whether we should use customer or whether we need to upgrade to QuickBooks Online Advanced, which is quite a significant price increase. That being said, let's just talk about the usability for now. So if we can fit within the usage limits within QuickBooks Online Plus, okay, we have less than 40, we will list our properties here. Notice I'm not listing any kind of sub classes or anything. I don't really need to here. Really, this is just a one for one, one property per one class. Okay. And just like I did with that transaction, and you already saw it on that property tax transaction, I'm going to have that class field available 
for me as well. Okay, so I have the class filled out. So what does this look like in practice? So I go to my balance sheet. What can we do with this information? So with this balance sheet or a profit and loss statement, because we're using these attributes, now I can use a generic chart of accounts, which if you know anything about my teaching is an absolutely essential part to being able to grow and scale your business. So a two dimensional chart of accounts, which means really generic over here. And now I can display columns by either customers or classes. I'm gonna do classes to start. Okay, I'm just gonna do that. What you see here is a really nice knee. There's 122 Buffalo Street, 205 Morris, 264 Union. And yeah, we got some general and not specified. I might not have updated all of those, but it's a really nice way of seeing what I own. And then if I go to my net income, it's kind of a similar look. I can then display columns by classes as well. And I can see on my PL, how am I doing by property? Really, really useful, amazing report. Now let's look at this from the customer level. If I display columns by customer, I'm gonna get kind of the same thing, but I have a small issue here. The issue is the hierarchy, all right? So QuickBooks Online will always display everything within the hierarchy, not giving you the option to give a summary level. So you saw back when I was showing you all my customers, I had some tenants listed. I had Juliet, I had Eloise, I had Wendell, all listed within their properties. And what that does is that QuickBooks will show the customer, kind of the parent level, any and all children, and then a total. And it won't just give you the total. There's no option for me to just display the total, which is a huge detriment to being able to understand this report. So if you think about it, if we have a two level hierarchy, it's absolutely impossible for us to have any less than three columns per customer for a property. If you have more tenants, more sub customers, then you're gonna have even more than that. All right, and to me, this makes managing just by customer alone, especially if we need that multiple level hierarchy to be really a burden to this type of reporting. If I go to my net income as well, same thing will show up if I do by customer. I'm getting all these extra columns. This is only three properties, right? So we can imagine if we had 10 or 20 properties with a few tenants within each, it's gonna grow way too big and be really difficult to manage. So if you wanna make use of the hierarchy aspect of QuickBooks Online and customer, then I really think that this report is going to not be useful unless you do both. All right, so you saw me adding both class and customer to both these transactions. And I think if you have the capacity to do so, both from a resourcing and a process standpoint, as well as you have QuickBooks Online Pro, doing this right here, okay, showing my customer, my project, and my class kind of gives me the best of both worlds. I have really good reporting as far as who owes me on invoicing. I can direct invoice my customers. I can still make, sh make use of the projects portal as well. I can go down here and see everything that's going on with my flips. And as I demonstrated within our kind of bigger reports, our general balance sheet, our general profit and loss, we have a really nice one column to one class ratio. And that shows me a really concise report that I can use kind of big picture. How am I doing? What's going on on a buy property level? If you can use both customer and class. That being said, if I had to pick one, I honestly really like just using class. I like the simplicity of it. I like having it just on its side right over here, having this report that I'm showing you, balance sheet and the PL, really neatly one-to-one -one sorted out. And then it opens up the customer field to really what it was designed for, which is invoicing out customers and tracking balances and statements by customer. That's really what it was for. Using customer for properties, a little bit of a hack, works pretty well, but as you can see, we have a little bit of that sh uh, reporting shortcoming. All right, let me know your thoughts, your questions. What do you do? Uh, do you have any questions on how this haul works? I'd love to open up the dialogue. If you have any questions about this or anything else, leave a comment here and definitely check out all the free resources we have available at IncomeDigs.com. Subscribe to this channel as well. We're posting new content, constantly. Specifically, we're talking about QuickBooks Online for real estate investing. If you're interested, we have an end-to-end -end course, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We dive into this strategy and so much more. We also have a community that's there for support, live Q&A sessions, as well as exclusive behind-the-scenes content. I really hope to see you there. But until next time, I'll see you on the next video.